Welcome to Breaking the Vow on Strong Island Radio. This is a show where we turn pain into power and find recovery after divorce, separation, and breakups. This is where we push the emotional hang-ups to the side and create a plan to reach our best possible potential. This is where the next chapter starts and how the healing begins. So let's welcome your hosts, Teresa D. and Benny the Life Coach. And here we are, back, with another edition of Breaking the Vow, talking a little bit about recovering from losses, from breakups, from bad relationships, bad marriages, to creating healthy relationships, and then a healthy life. Right. With me, as always, I am Benny the Life Coach, by the way, with me, as always. Teresa D. And I think I heard a rumor. You did? Maybe you can clarify this. I heard we have a very special guest today. Oh, he's awesome. Awesome. As yes. in with capital A, awesome, or all letters in capitals, awesome? All letters in caps. <laughs> so, folks, I, I wish you could see things in the, in the <laughs> studio, but sometimes I'm glad you can't. So, but without further ado, I, I, I'm, I would like to... I'm I, so excited. All right, wait, you introduce. Do no, you, you introduce me. No, no, you in, Okay. Tom, you introduce Tom, yourself. you introduce yourself. Maybe, maybe I'll introduce myself. All right, good. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> I know who I am, I, I think. I'm and so sure. do a lot of people. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> and if I forget, just remind me. Okay. So, uh, good day, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Tom Verney. I'm a uh, retired uh, NYPD detective. Um, I worked with the NYPD for uh, almost 22 years. And in post-retirement... Um, Currently, I'm a director of security at a, at a private school in Queens. Um, but after I retired, uh, there were a number of high-profile police-related incidents that took place. And uh, since I had contacts in the media uh, from when I worked in the police department, they had contacted me uh, to come on and talk about some of those things. So some of those things include uh, Ferguson and Michael Brown, yes. uh, Garner, Staten Island, uh, Texas Church Massacre, the Las Vegas shooting, uh, you know, uh, every, pretty much every high-profile police-related incident that you've heard about since 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and what would happen is w when those things occur, I'll either get called by um, either Inside Edition or Fox 5, mm -hmm. uh, New York or CNN or Fox News. Uh, and sometimes some international uh, media outlets will call as well, like uh, BBC or um Sunrise on Seven, which is in Australia. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because these, a lot of these entities have questions about why police do what they do in yes. these crazy cases. Uh, and while it's easy to kind of lump them all together uh, and say, well, you know, the cops are a bunch of racist stormtroopers. Right. You know, the reality is that in the United States, there are seven to 800,000 law enforcement personnel. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, and if there was a, in my opinion, if there was a, uh, a serious systemic problem with police officers, we would need a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week news channel to cover it because you know, the yeah. police are having, as we speak, are having millions of interactions with people around the, mm -hmm. the country. So if, by and large, the overwhelming majority of them were not doing the job correctly, uh, we would have a real problem on our hands. And I think you know uh, there would be some immediate changes that would need to be made. Now, having said that... Um, I'll be the first one to admit that police, like any other profession, has their problem children. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, they're, cops they're, human. There they're are still robots. people, correct? I mean, yeah, there's people, still people. People do make mistakes. I think. Yeah. Isn't that and, yeah. And absolutely. So, and, and the problem, so go ahead. You know, when cops make mistakes, the problem there is that they, it's almost like they they have to operate with it's magnified efficiency. So the because one thing any mistake they make. Uh, could potentially injure or, or kill somebody. Right. Um, so they have to be on point 110% of the time. And that's not, that's just not possible. No. The other problem too, and, and we've seen this um, highlighted in the last few years, is that, you know, we in the United States still live in a largely a racist, sexist, homophobic society, you know, anti-Semitic, if you want to throw a few others in there, mm -hmm. you know, we, we as a country have issues with 
all of those things that are still occurring and have been occurring since our inception as a country. So the police are a subculture within our overall culture, right? Yes. So if we as a, an entire country really have to sit down and have some serious conversations about how we're going to educate our kids uh, and educate ourselves, yes. uh, those of us who, who grew up with this as a normality, um, about addressing these issues of race and class and culture and you know, socioeconomic situations and uh, homophobia and transgender phobia and all that. You know, we have to have these conversations first. And, and well, first, first we have to identify the fact that we are having these issues. Right. And then we have to kind of educate ourselves uh, as to why are we having these issues and how can we move beyond that to try to unify ourselves as a, as a country. Yes. Like our, right. The police are, are kind of caught up in the midst of all that, right? They are. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then when they go out and dispense their, you know, their law enforcement duties, the training that they get, depending on the police academy that you're talking about, in the NYPD, it's about six or seven months. You know, and what these academies try to do is they try to um, almost program them as a robot, so to, uh, so to speak, in the sense that they try to take a, a new recruit coming in with 21 or 30 or 35 or 40 years of, of being socialized uh, by society and reprogram them to think the way the police department wants them to think and act for mm -hmm. the eight or 10 or 12 hours that they're going to be out in the street. Yeah. Now, most of the time that training is good and it, and it takes hold and, and, and the cops react the way that they're supposed to. Uh, I think it's also pretty important to point out though, the NYPD has probably the most diverse police force in the country. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, now it does. Yeah. yeah now I mean, when I came in in 1982, back in the 1900s, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there was something that happened before 2000, I know. Yeah. Most people uh, don't go that far. Back, back then, what was happening in the, um, well, first of all, in 1992, the, the crime rate was probably the highest it had ever been. Mm -hmm. Late 80s and early 90s in New York City, uh, there were 2,000 people a year being killed. Yeah. In the city. You know, crack was whack, and I guess yeah. it still was. Uh, mm -hmm. But back then, it was all over the place. The gangs were entrenched. There was still mafia uh, mm -hmm. strongholds happening. So, uh, so when I came, in, so the crime situation was really bad. But also, the police department, when you looked at at that time, it was twenty eight thousand cops in the mm -hmm. city. Yeah. And when you looked at the face of of the police department, it didn't really accurately represent the the you know the, the five boroughs of which they were right in. yes it didn't you're right in the last couple of decades they've, they've tried to change that they've yes. tried, tried to diversify the departments and now when you look at the thirty five thousand cops that are there um it was forty one thousand prior to nine eleven and since nine eleven yes lost right thousand through attrition and whatnot uh but now it now it actually it much better uh represents accurately represents the people that live in the city Mm -hmm. See, but that's, that's, that's really important. Imp that's really important to talk about because you had mentioned what our country's history is like. Yeah, I am. I, listen, I, 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 I love my country. Oh yeah. I am not always proud of our history, but that does not mean I don't love my country. Right. And that, so they say America. Well, we have a checkered history. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, the the great thing is what I don't think that gets talked about is. We are updating our thinking. We are yeah. updating our education. You have to. There are, there are new, there's new training. And, you know, I stay away from words like systemic racist racism because I'm not sure about that. And it's not to say that I say it, it exists or it doesn't. I just know that I am not personally educated enough uh -huh. to make that judgment. I know what I see. Um, you know, as someone that was... I've been part of the... Uh, fight against the opiate uh, epidemic for a very long time. Uh -huh. And I remember having a conversation. They said, well, you, you're just like that because it, it's affecting white people now. That's not true. Whoa, really? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 so <sighs> I say, I'm, I'm a father of a biracial I child. Like, I, 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 I've dealt with racism my whole life. So when you talk about anti-Semitism, I, I, I'm an Irish Jew. I'm like the only Irish Jew that I know. <laughs> You're the only Irish Jew that I know. <laughs> a lot of people seem to tell me that. The mayor of Dublin, <laughs> the mayor of Dublin was Jewish. I don't think it lasted too long. Like, Manischewitz and Guinness do not go well together. I don't think Seriously? so. Seriously? Well, they don't. 
No, they don't. I don't drink anymore, but I, I if I went back to drinking, <laughs> I wouldn't put them two together at all. Mm-hmm. But, right. you know, so I, I, listen, I grew up with, in, in, a, in a, you know, middle-income neighborhood, nobody was exceptionally wealthy or poor, but there was not. Um, a big influence of different ethnicity. Yeah, and where I grew up either. Right. There really wasn't. Well, we had military housing, and that was really where the, the, the you know, like, black or Latino, like, there wasn't a lot in, in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I, I think I was about six, someone burned a cross on my neighbor's lawn. Uh-huh. Because uh-huh. one of the people that lived there was a black guy, and I remember I, I had my feety little, my little feety pajamas, and my father grabbed me. We walked past the police were there, the fire department was there. My father walked me down our walkway, along the sidewalk, up their walkway, and the man's name was Mister Prouse, and he walked up and he shook his hand. He goes, "Not everybody feels this way," mm-hmm. and then we walked back around and. I, I I was young, so I, I remember thinking, like, why would they do that? Like, I, I, I knew the cross had something to do about God. I didn't know why somebody would lie to the cross. And I asked my father, I said, why would they do that? He says, because some people are stupid. And I was always taught. It's kind of not an explanation, though. It's, well, it wasn't. An, I was six, so I don't know how much I could have really retained True. at that point. I just well, was like. Well, same, same as you retain now. I'm brighter than a six-year-old. I write on a seventh-grade level. You do? Sometimes. <laughs> but the, the, so I remember being taught about racism. So I'll tell you what. We, we actually got to oh, pay yeah. a few bills. So we do. This is going to be a great show. I love it. Thank, I'm so glad you're here. Yes, uh, Tom. We're going to pay a few bills and then come right and back. And we'll be right back. All right. Thanks, Tom. Ben, I found the greatest invention ever. Okay. I went to take my patio furniture out. Okay. And I realized that last year when I put it all away, I put them in these big zipper bags from Wrap America. Yes. <sighs> Life changing. Yes. No, no, no. Wrap America is awesome. Tommy, Tommy definitely helped me out on a few different occasions. It holds actually- patio furniture, wave runners, ATVs. It's weather resistant. Advanced protection wrap. Yes. Is economical and a practical choice. So call 516-830-0040 or you can go onto their website, wrap-america.com. All right. Since we have a meeting after this in West Islip, yes. I got a place for us to go. Oh, you do? Uh-huh. Because I'm, I'm going to be hungry. So we're going to go to Our Little Italy. 636 Union Boulevard, West Islip, New York, 11795. If you want to know, call 631-661-6246. Pick up and delivery are available. Ask for John. Go on www.ourlittleitalymenu.com to find out what they have. Ooh, and- I heard they have good chicken farm. Hey, Ben. Yes? I need to talk about solar energy. Okay. Lighthouse Energy Partners. Go solar and start saving today. Makes it's sense. Owner operated by women. Ooh. We believe in order to close the gender gap in the energy field, we need to showcase key female players and keeping them behind the scenes. Their mission is to serve clients with the highest level of integrity, stability, and respect by viewing their customers as partners. Any energy project you have in mind, Call on Lighthouse Energy, www.lighthouseenergypartners.com, 631-275-0091, located in Babylon Village, New York. So I have great news. Since we do this show on divorce, you know, when divorce hits, you, you know, maybe you want to sell the house. Maybe you need a CFO, a certificate of occupancy for, occupancy for certain things in the house. So if you're looking to make some home improvements, need an architect, contact Certified Drafting. Selling your home, need permits for existing structures, need a property survey, contact Certified Drafting. Certified Drafting will handle all building department matters, serving Long Island for over 20 years. www.certifieddrafting.com, office number 516-844-0420. Or you can email Kevin Daly at certifieddrafting.com. Tell them you heard about this from the show, from Breaking the Vow, 
you're going to receive a 10% discount. We love Kevin. I love Kevin. I think that's pretty awesome. All right, and we're back. So we were talking about some things during the break, which I can't talk about now a lot. Yes, you can't. There's no judgment here. We there's don't no do judgment. that. There's no judgment. So these lessons were taught, right? We were talking about how racism is taught. Like, I didn't know about racism until someone told me about it. Yeah. I certainly didn't know until someone's like, well, you're not supposed to be friends with him. That person's your enemy. And I was like, really? I didn't know... Too much. Someone when, actually said to you that person's your enemy. Sure, sure, a hundred percent. Yeah, I grew. I, you know, wow. Yeah, but it was, but it was also part of the neighborhood. So you were mentioning ninety two, right? That's when you started in the police force, right, Tom? Yes. Okay, mm-hmm. ninety two. Well, I was getting out of trouble at that point, uh, but I remember the city during the crack epidemic. Ugh. I also remember the way uh, it was handled, as opposed to the way opiate abuse is being handled now i don't think that's racist i think that's updated thinking i i don't think that the police force is racist i think we've updated the force i think we've we've... updated the training i think we've updated the thinking i think i think not to get political and i and i I want to stay away from that of course but like we've never had a mayor that the entire police force like at Mia Sotis's funeral, stood up and turned their back. Yeah, on the mayor. It, yeah, we back right. the blue. So we, we do back the blue. We there. back the blue always. And it, I mean, there there are you know, and, well to follow up on that. So just to and to call you know to to call it out for what it is. It if you go through in some of these cases that we've been seeing over the last number of years uh, with some of these police departments and. And when I went down, so I went down to um, New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. They sent, they sent 300 of us from New York City down there. And I was in the first wave that went down there. We were down there for about two or three weeks initially to transport people from the Superdome or the uh, convention center. Right. To uh, Little Rock, Arkansas or uh, Houston. And it took us 42 hours to drive down there because we were on city coach buses. Oh, oh God. <laughs> We took a fleet of them down there, and they only go 55 miles an hour oh. maximum. So uh, we, we, we went down with a whole convoy. And uh, and just to give you an example, uh, I won't name the town we went into, but we, we, get, we get down to this little town outside of New Orleans City. And uh, the idea was to set up a base of operations there and then, and then go into the city from that point. Right. And... Uh, and to not only transport these people from uh, this, this decimated city to these other places for temporary housing, but also to help the local police departments uh, try to stabilize their uh, situation. The whole yeah. New Orleans Police Department was only 1,500 people at the time. And wow. we, we came down there with 300. So we came down with, with one-fifth the size of that. Right. Department. So, but long story short was that we, we got down there, it was myself, and uh, we, we brought a whole convoy of buses and police vehicles and uh, search and rescue and, and, and all that stuff, emergency services. And we, we, we pull into this uh, the space that we were going to set up as a camp. And uh, literally, we get out of the cars, uh, off the buses, rather. And as we get off the buses, some of the local cops there are... Um, you know, uh, they come over and they're, they're, uh, they come thank us, you know, hey, guys, thanks for coming down. We know it took a long time. And we really appreciate it. Uh, but you could have left some of those some of those up there. And, you know, the guy was kind of pointing in the, in the direction where we had a bunch of our police cars, you know, patrol cars parked. And I was like, well, that's why. And, and me and the two cops I'm talking with, which both happen to be white, we both looked at each other like, what is he talking about? And he's like left some of the cars out there. He's like, no, 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 you know, some of them. And what he was pointing to, the only people that were standing near where our cars Oh, were, no. Were three cops. Uh, one was black, one was black and Latino, and the other one was Latino. Uh-huh. So it, you know, it kind of took a second to, to, you know, not to sound naive, but it took a second for it to register because- Yeah. You wouldn't like, expect you someone wouldn't of that position that. to be that much yeah. of an idiot. Right. I'm telling you, this is in the first 90 seconds of the Oh, meeting. my God. Yeah, great first impression. Yeah. Doing well. Yeah. yeah. So now, mind you, my based on our conversations with them, 
is that 99.9% of them have ne never been out of the bayou. They've never been to New York City. Right. Mm -hmm. Talk about perception. What you had mentioned before was that perception is nine tenths of the law, right? Yeah. So their perception of us was based majorly on what they saw in the news. Yes. What they see on TV and mm -hmm. TV shows and what they see in the movies. Yeah. So I, you know, my vibe was that their, uh, they assumed that we were just going to automatically click with that and be down with that. And our initial reaction after we were kind of like shook for a quick second was, well, why would we leave them up there? Mm -hmm. Right. Good for you. And then they kind of, they kind of did like an oh shit look like, oh, you know. Right. So we didn't have to really say anything more than that because. At that point they knew. It's kind of a teachable moment, right? So yes. what, we, what we were saying was, was like, listen, I'm here to help. Right. I'm not, I'm not here to, to, to tell you how to cook your hamburgers in your own backyard, but we're not going to play that game. No. Good so for you. If, if Good for you. you. If that's the way you guys operate, that's your business. You know, uh, I don't agree with that, but, you know, it's it's your backyard and I'm, I'm here to help, right. you know, fill the pool, right? So, yeah. uh, but we were told when we left New York City from the police commissioner at one police plaza that we were to conduct ourselves as if we were conducting operations in the middle of Times Square. Mm. So anything we would have done in the middle of Times Square is the way we should be acting down in the bayou because... They knew, they knew when, you know, the mixing of the cultures, Yeah. The, you know, the New York culture versus the, you know, the Louisiana culture, especially in, in the deep South was going to be one of potential problems because we weren't sending 300 white cops down there. We were sending 300 yeah. mixed race and 300 cops. Right. 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 And, and, you know, so that's where you learn these, um, that's where these, you know, these core values. Uh, that's kind of not something that could be taught in the Academy. Like, you have to live that. So the one thing yeah. that I will say is it's amazing to me that people act as yeah. if racism is new. Right. Because it's been around for oh, a long time. Forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it, yeah. it has I been around know. for a long time. Again, yeah. I repeat what I say frequently and honestly, that I am, I love my country. I am not proud of our history. I am not proud of certain behaviors. Right. But. There's that saying, America, love it or leave it, correct? I do love it, therefore I can't leave it. No. And I'm grateful that there are people like yourself that have no problem mm -hmm. speaking up for what's right. right. You know, Because yeah. that was truly a teachable moment, Tom. And that was, was, let's shut it, this down now. Yeah, it really was. And, mm -hmm. I, and look, like I said, I'm, I'm not, listen, I, I never proclaimed to be the best cop ever. Uh, I, I, I don't. But you are. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> tell to my boss <laughs> that didn't promote me, but I, um, but I never claimed proclaimed to be you know, the best human ever. I mean, I, all I know is that I've, I've, I've made mistakes. You know, like, but you've learned has. to improve. Yeah, you've uh, learned to improve. Yeah. You had your teachable moments. So yes, you talked about you know homophobia or mm -hmm. transgender phobia. Mm -hmm. I will say. These things were never talked about. No, they were never talked about way back when. Never talked no. about. No. And I, I, as, as, a, as, a, as a coach and a sober coach, I have worked with uh, teenagers yeah. who were able to come out and find who they were at a young yeah. age. Because I, I know people in my, in my life who were never comfortable coming out. And as... I, I won't say that's the reason why they they passed away, but I, I will say that certainly led to their anxiety level. I certainly right. think that not being able to be comfortable in your own skin had to didn't help their depression, which certainly didn't help their drug abuse issues or substance right. abuse or alcohol abuse disorder or and or or suicide. Right. And you know I lost friends because of that. Yeah. I, I so I, I, I the one thing and, and I, this is what the show is about. Obviously, we talk about divorce a lot, but we want to talk about what we teach kids. We want to talk about yes. what we learn. We want to talk about, like, how do we make our society better? Better. How do we do it? And, you know, the, the, we're going to be going to uh, a commercial in a second. But I have a question before we go to break. You know, there is there is the blue line, which I, I proudly support. Yes. However, a lot of people that I've worked with uh, in within the blue line or behind the blue line them talking about certain things was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Stigma was, was you know, 
a huge struggle for them. And then they find a lot of a lot of them spoke about things after retirement. Right. I would have to imagine yeah. for you to speak about things as openly or be on television. That's got to be interesting. So when we come back from the break, mm -hmm. I would love to hear what that was like for you or if there was in fact a transformation like that tight lipness like right you were quiet and don't, then don't you ask worry. don't tell don't tell yeah. anybody what's going on here because there is an us against them mentality but listen as i was i was i was not a good person for a long time and there was an us against them mentality mm -hmm. but on the other side because i've done police initiatives and there is an us against them mentality because same as i looked at you at, at, at someone in law enforcement as the enemy in order for them to survive, they had to look at me a certain way because they was they were trying to survive. Listen, I'm going to go to work tomorrow, and guess what? No one is going to pull a gun at me. I can't say that for an officer of the law. So I, I'm, I, we're going to go to a break real quick, and I, I can't wait to hear what that transition was like. So we'll speak to you in a couple minutes, folks. Ben, I found the greatest invention ever. Okay. I went to take my patio furniture out. Okay. And I realized that last year when I put it all away, I put them in these big zipper bags from Rap America. Yes. <sighs> Life changing. Yes. No, no, no. Rap America is awesome. Tommy, Tommy definitely helped me out on a few different occasions. It he holds actually... patio furniture, wave runners, ATVs. It's weather resistant. It's Advanced protection wrap. Yes. Is economical and a practical choice. So call 516-830-0040, or you can go onto their website, rap-america.com. All right, since we have a meeting after this in West Islip, yes. I got a place for us to go. Oh, you do? Uh-huh, because I'm, I'm gonna be hungry, so we're gonna go to Our Little Italy, 636 Union Boulevard, West Islip, New York, 11795. If you want to know, call 631-661-6246. Pickup and delivery are available. Ask for John. Go on www.ourlittleitalymenu.com to find out what they have. Oh, I heard they have good chicken parm. Hey, Ben. Yes? I need to talk about solar energy. Okay. I Lighthouse Energy Partners. Go solar and start saving today. Makes it's sense. Owner operated by women. Ooh. We believe in order to close the gender gap in the energy field, we need to showcase key female players and keeping them behind the scenes. Their mission is to serve clients with the highest level of integrity, stability, and respect by viewing their customers as partners. Any energy project you have in mind, call on Lighthouse Energy, www.lighthouseenergypartners.com. 631-275-0091, located in Babylon Village, New York. So I have great news. Since we do this show on divorce, you know, when divorce hits, you, you know, maybe you want to sell the house. Maybe you need a CFO, a certificate of occupancy for, occupancy for certain things in the house. So if you're looking to make some home improvements, need an architect, contact certified drafting. Selling your home, need permits for existing structures, need a property survey, contact Certified Drafting. Certified Drafting will handle all building department matters, serving Long Island for over 20 years. www.certifieddrafting.com, office number 516-844-0420. Or you can email Kevin Daly at certifieddrafting.com. Tell them you heard about this from the show, from Breaking the Vow. And you're going to receive a 10% discount. We love Kevin. I love Kevin. I think that's pretty awesome. And we're back. So we were talking about this transformation of like being yeah. in the blue, being in uniform, or then being a detective, and then going from that to being on television. Yeah. What, what was that What like, was man? different? Um, Did they put makeup on you? <laughs> yes. Tom doesn't okay. need makeup. You do Stop look it. nice. No one can see, but he does I, not I'm... need makeup. He's handsome. I feel like I could use some makeup sometimes. <laughs> That's my mom's question. Uh, but <laughs> for the sake of everyone's uh, sanity and to not scare off the viewership, they had to put makeup on me. Stop uh, it. 
Yeah, I'd empty out the case in the, uh, in, the green, <laughs> in the green room. So um, no, they, so what happened was the um, so in, in the police department, I, I was on patrol for a number of years. I did plain clothes work. Uh, I was in community policing. I was you know a beat cop slash uh, youth officer. So so I had a lot of uh, various experiences on patrol. Then uh, for a while, I taught in the police academy as an instructor. I'm still a certified uh, police instructor. And uh, after that, I went into uh, citywide uh, crime prevention and, and community affairs, where I worked for one of the top chiefs in the department. And while I was there, I got into working with the Hate Crimes Task Force, which is the detective unit of the NYPD that, that investigates nice. crime. Nice. So one of the 16 jobs I had um, was... <laughs> At least 16. I think you're being modest. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, when I was working with the chief... Uh, what would happen is these crime victim agencies that would be outside the police department. So if you're a victim of a bias incident, if you're a victim of domestic violence, if you're a victim of, of pretty much anything, but you're afraid to go to the police or maybe you call the police and the police came and didn't do anything. Right. Uh, which is happens from time to time. Right. That they go to these outside agencies and report these incidents that occurred to them. And then I would be the liaison um, where I would go and meet that victim i would take the initial report i would take the initial what we would call an aided card if the person was injured and needed medical assistance and then i would uh literally drive or walk the uh crime victim into the precinct in which this occurred and then talk to the desk officer tell him what you know uh, he or she what i had and then uh and then we would go up to the squad the detective squad of that precinct now if it was something that was bias related they would call in the hate crimes task force Right. to come in and take the lead on that investigation. Uh, if it was robbery related, then the robbery squad of that borough might be called in to come and take the lead on that investigation. And then I would be kind of like the go-between between the victim and that investigative unit, right? right. To, to mm -hmm. their connection. Um, and, and have them use me for whatever they needed uh, as part of the investigation. So uh, so when I left the police department, I, like I said, I had a pretty well-rounded resume doing a lot yeah. of different things. So uh, when these these high profile incidents occurred, you know, and, and I had these contacts in the media, they uh, they had reached out and they said, hey, you know, um, why? And the first one to reach out was Fox Five, so I knew I knew some people there, and they said, why? Why do you think the cops did what they did in Ferguson? Why do you think they did what they did in Staten Island with Eric Garner? Mm -hmm. And then I would go and, and I would talk to them off camera, you know, uh, just on the phone about like why was that in. Uh, line with training was that in line with the law uh did, what they did was it legal was it not legal and then they said well you know why don't you come on and talk about that and i was like okay yeah because at the time there were a lot of people coming on tv bashing the cops not having an ounce of law enforcement experience mm -hmm. uh and just you know just calling them out flatlining them that oh yeah they're just all racist well, right. do you so right. here's an interesting question on that do you find that people parrot and repeat misinformation just because someone sold it to them and it sounded good to them and it fit a narrative. So they just parrot and repeat what they were told, which not yeah. isn't necessarily educated or accurate. Right. Would you say right. that happens a lot? It happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I would say the it's same like the thing. Game but of I wanted, it's I just the game want, of telephone. Let I just wanted there. you to agree with me. And there's well, another question. So listen, I, you know, what I tell people is that you know, and, and, and I don't, you know, not to get political, but, you know, and certainly, you know, the political landscape in the last number of years has yeah. been such where it's polarized us as Americans, it's polarized us as Long Islanders, it's mm -hmm. polarized us as family members and friends, right? And, uh, and depending on where you're getting a news source from, many times will determine how it's shaping your view of what's happening. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. If you're watching, you know, if you're watching CNN or you're watching MSNBC, you know, CNN is kind of teeters somewhere in the middle, but you know, leans left. MSNBC is definitely to the left. You got Fox, which is leaning right. Along yep. the right and Newsmax somewhere off in that direction. Yep. Um, and people tend to pigeonhole themselves into one into whatever news media is feeding them what they really kind of yes. like so wait do you mean the news that i learn on facebook isn't true <laughs> oh, is that what you're telling me <laughs> come on 80, 80, instagram 80, is not true i thought twitter and facebook Tom were the editor of all news totally crushed it for me <laughs> you gotta be kidding yeah and it's, well so that's 
and that's the shame of it. The shame of it Isn't all it? is that it's <laughs> it's a total to shame. And that's why I kind of I kind of keep an eye on on a lot of different news uh, media because I don't I don't just listen to only to CNN. Right. I don't listen only to what you know what I might be reading in Newsday. Right. It, it is uh, amazing you know, like to me. New York Times. You it, have to keep an open. First of all, I think keeping open open an open mind is the best way to go. Yes. This whole thing to begin with. Because you have to take these bits and tidbits of information, because they vary so much right. from one media to the other, and take it for what it's worth, ingest it, base it on what you know, base it on, but most importantly, base it on people who actually work in the field. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. And can Ask tell you a professional. Blank, right. Point blank range. Like, quick aside, you know, with the with the pandemic, you know, I have friends of mine that are doctors. I have friends of mine who are nurses. So when all that stuff started breaking out in early 2020, you know, you were seeing one thing on Fox, you see one thing on CNN yes. and somewhere else, right? But I would ask people in the field, what are you seeing? And what do you know about this? And what have you heard? What have you read up about? Uh, what, what are the statistics that are coming back? What's the science say? Right. right? And, uh, and, and, and so I would take what they were giving me and incorporate that with what I was hearing from all these different directions. Yes. And then try to make some kind of determination you know, do I feel comfortable enough to go get a vaccine? You know, having 9-11 related asthma, do I want to, do I want to play Russian roulette? Right. That Absolutely. Get COVID and then maybe not survive that. Right. Scenario? Um, so yeah, so the, the bottom line is that when, when I go on these, these shows, especially a show like CNN, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll, they'll have uh, the host and then they'll have, you know, two, three guests and, Ideally, if the guests disagree with each other and then they start to go at it, right? That's when people start clicking. That's right, people, exactly. Man, Everyone loves the train wreck. Yeah, and I'm not there to fight with anybody. Right. Uh, you You're know, not I'm that type to, of person. You know, I'm, I'm just there to, I'm, it's just more than giving my opinion. I'm there to, based on the scenario that we're discussing, right. if I have firsthand knowledge of that, either based on what I experienced when I was out in the street, right. based on my training, based on what we would teach our recruits, Right. Based on what my where uh, my based on of that topic is and the law that pertains to it, I'm giving you a firsthand account. Yes. based on 22 years of experience. Yes, uh, as to why the cops may have done what they did because I wasn't there. Right. So I can only speculate, but I'm also tying in real factual right. experience. Right. It's the facts. Training, right. Yes. And that's. So my purpose is to raise people's level of awareness yes. as to why police do what they do. Not right. any of us having been in Ferguson. Right. Or exactly. And, and all it's an other honest people. perspective. Yes. That's it. It's an honest it's perspective. It's honest and it's factual. It's still, somewhat, it's still somewhat of an opinion, right? Right. But, it's, but I'm basing my opinion not on speculation. Right. It's primarily based on education. It's based right. on training. It's based on knowledge. Yes. Well, let's also face it. We right. you, so you brought up the the vaccine. So, and we'll we'll go back to Facebook. Me and Twitter. <laughs> being, Why being, would you ever want to go back to Facebook? Because they're the editors of Truth. Now. <laughs> And let's let's no, think about this. No, I think this. Instagram and Snapchat are. No, no Instagram. It's just pictures. Yeah. I can dig that, but because I, I, I right. but here, They're so mostly, mostly people good. are so easily misled by yes. misinformation. So, for Never example, Google anything. No, Google's not your friend. No. So mm-hmm. sometimes, but most times, no. And I remember I posted a picture when I was a kid. I was a metalhead. There used to be this band, Suicidal Tendencies, and there was a. Uh, a picture of a guy, of the singer saying, all I wanted was a Pepsi, just one Pepsi. And it's like, help Mike get a Pepsi. And it was like, almost like he was abused. Now, anyone that saw that, that picture and knew about the band, they would laugh. So what happens was, someone on my friends list copied it and was like, it's wrong what they're doing to him. He's being <laughs> abused. So I didn't have the heart. So right. I just sent her a private message and like, Please take really that down. just just take Please, it down. It, it's 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 a joke, right? It's not right. what you think it is, right? But it's a perfect analogy of how crazy our world. Oh is my become. god! All right, it's so insane. We're coming back. Uh, we're gonna go to a break. We're gonna come back with our, our our final little little chapter in this, and come back with uh you know constructive conclusion and what we could all take for, take away from this show. And uh, I'm I'm having a ball, Tom. Me too. Right so we'll be right back.
Ben, I found the greatest invention ever. Okay. I went to take my patio furniture out. Okay. And I realized that last year when I put it all away, I put them in these big zipper bags from Wrap America. Yes. <sighs> Life changing. Yes. No, no, no. Wrap America is awesome. Tommy, Tommy definitely helped me out on a few different occasions. It he holds actually, patio furniture, wave runners, ATVs. It's weather resistant. It's advanced protection wrap. Yes. Is economical and a practical choice. So call 516-830-0040 or you can go onto their website, wrap-america.com. All right. Since we have a meeting after this in West Islip, yes. I got a place for us to go. Oh, you do? Uh huh. Because I'm, I'm going to be hungry, so we're going to go to our little Italy, 636 Union Boulevard, West Islip, New York, 11795. If you want to know, call 631 661 6246. Pickup and delivery are available. Ask for John. Go on www.ourlittleitalymenu.com to find out what they have. Oh, I heard they have good chicken parm. Hey, Ben. Yes. I need to talk about solar energy. Okay. I Lighthouse Energy Partners. Go solar and start saving today. Makes it's sense. Owner operated by women. Ooh. We believe in order to close the gender gap in the energy field, we need to showcase key female players and keeping them behind the scenes. Their mission is to serve clients with the highest level of integrity, stability, and respect by viewing their customers as partners. Any energy project you have in mind, call on Lighthouse Energy, www.lighthouseenergypartners.com, 631-275-0091, located in Babylon Village, New York. So I have great news. Since we do this show on divorce, you know, when divorce hits, you, you know, maybe you want to sell the house. Maybe you need a CFO, a certificate of occupancy for, occupancy for certain things in the house. So if you're looking to make some home improvements, need an architect, Contact Certified Drafting. Selling your home, need permits for existing structures, need a property survey, contact Certified Drafting. Certified Drafting will handle all building department matters, serving Long Island for over 20 years. www.certifieddrafting.com, office number 516-844-0420. Or you can email Kevin Daly at certifieddrafting.com. Tell them you heard about this from the show, from Breaking the Vow. And you're going to receive a 10% discount. We love Kevin. I love Kevin. I think that's pretty awesome. And we're back with Tom Verney. So how are you feeling about this whole trip, Tom? <laughs> you know, you've been on these things before. Ride. Yeah, wait a second. You've been on like Fox News, man. I know. How are we with like... Wait, wait, wait. He, he... He... Has been on the ID channel. That's awesome, my. Yeah. How are we doing with professional levels of professionalism? Stan, I stand him. Excellent. Well, well. <laughs> so for a couple of plugs. Uh, so anyone who watches Investigation Discovery Channel, you can catch me on. That would uh, be me. They have a series called uh, Crimes Gone Viral. Yes. So the mm. first season was last year. That's uh, that's on their website. So if you go on the website on InvestigationDiscovery.com. And uh, look up Crimes Gone Viral. I'm in about, I think, 15 of the 20 episodes that they have. Uh, yes, that's you're in excellent. 15 of them. I watched uh, them all. As a comment, right? Yeah, just as a commentator. <laughs> and then um, th we're filming the second season now, which I think is due to come out sometime in the fall. Excellent. Our... Just letting you know I'm available. <laughs> just letting you know I'm available. <laughs> what? Yeah. For, for Crimes Gone Viral? What? Maybe. <laughs> To be on a viral video committee. Right, exactly. Report. Listen, I've been on worst kind of videos. My biggest fear, I, I, I walk in, I, I have this fear with cameras. Yeah, right now, I, I yes, I well, I have reason to, but yeah. oh my God, like if I see one, I have OCD. I was running, I was running a, an empowerment group and someone pointed out the camera to me and I'm like, listen, do me a favor. Don't uh, tell me that again. Yeah. Because I, they're like, why? I'm like, because I can't help but notice that. So every once in a while, my eyes are going to look to see that I'm on camera. Right. Yeah. When I was younger and less than innocent, I was caught on camera. Yeah. <laughs> More than once. Yeah. So uh -huh. now, but now there's cameras everywhere. I know. You know, 
I am fortunate. We are fortunate that we didn't grow up with camera phones. I know. We are, yeah. we didn't grow yeah. up with the internet either. Uh, yeah. yeah, we didn't have the internet. Yeah. Which is a plethora of information. That was the 1900s. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was the yeah, 1900s. Yeah, we did. Oh, my. Things were different back then. Yeah. The other, we had the a other, wall, like, I, keep, I keep explaining to my kids, we had a wall phone. They're like, what is that? <laughs> oh, yeah. They have no idea. Listen, yeah. my, my God bless the dead. My father was born out of the Depression. So he would be like, ah, when I was your age... I'm like, they, they didn't even have TVs when you were my age. And, and that was not the right answer, by the way. <laughs> my father was a licensed steam fit. He had really heavy hands and they hurt. <laughs> but like, and I have this thing that I have this diarrhea of the mouth wise assness. <laughs> and I was a kid. He would say something like that. And like, I, they didn't have that when you were a kid. Pop, bam. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. It wasn't, it wasn't smart. Yeah. I never said I was a bright kid. Just energetic. Well, you know what? Thank God they didn't have that back when we were growing up. No, I'd still be doing a bit. See? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm 100%. Because I, was, I wasn't even smart enough. I, I got caught on camera and they didn't even have cameras back then. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I wasn't. You know, but I, 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 I do want to celebrate yeah, I, a few things uh, that you guys were talking about and that you were talking about. You know, we have updated our thinking, updated yes. our thinking. And, and I want to celebrate the fact that, you know, we do have people like you that give a different perspective of the world. Because you actually, you know, I tell people, listen, we all chew the same dirt. Some people have different rocks. Right. Right. I work for a living. My job is what my job is. There's different people that, that, that do the sim similar work to me. So they'll understand what I'll say. But someone outside of that, circle wouldn't right and yeah. anyone outside of that circle giving judgment it just wouldn't make sense what yeah. i appreciate most is that when you come in you're inside the circle You've yeah you there. already know so anyone to, that would try to discredit you it's just someone simply looking to continue an argument because you're not fitting with a narrative yeah tom and doesn't I, I argue love, though i love well you don't have tom to. can, he doesn't have to because he kills them with facts so that isn't that the greatest thing when like yeah People will sit there and argue and complain and argue and argue. You can be right. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know how that works for you. <laughs> you know, what? I, and, and some people have, I mean, whenever I go on these shows, uh, have gone on these shows in the past, um, you know, if it's, so what's interesting is that I, there could be a cop that does something in one of these incidents that's 150% wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. right. And I'll go on and I'll say that. I'll say, you know, well, I say, well, Tom, what do you think about that? And I said, well, my short answer is that, you know, that cop should be fired and put in jail, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because based on what he did, there's nothing that I know of in, in police training that would justify that. There's no law on the books that I know that would justify that. Uh, so I don't understand, you know, uh, how he would, how he's going to be able to get away with that. Case in point, let's say with George Floyd, you know, right. in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's, while there are different tactical, various tactical measures that they teach you in, in physical training and tactics in the academy on how to take somebody down, how to keep somebody down uh, who's non compliant and, and or, you know, maybe is, is uh, emotionally disturbed and whatnot. Uh, you know, kneeling on somebody's neck for almost 10 minutes is not one of them. Never no, acceptable. It it's never right? okay. So, you know, so sometimes, you know, I'll go on and I'll talk about that. And, and, it's a, and that's a given fact. Uh, that's the state that we're living in, and, right. and, and humanely, that's just the way you don't no, treat people, right? right? But, yet, but yet on Twitter, if you, if you look for me, at Tom Verney, mm -hmm. uh, that yeah, I will get dragged by some of these guys that are like, oh, well, you're a leftist, left-wing liberal, and that, that, uh, that. I you hate know, that. Listen, I, have friend, I have friends of mine who, can, who classify themselves as left-wing liberals, and they don't believe I'm anywhere near being a left wing. Right. So, not. and even if I was, it doesn't matter if I, if the, if I'm just stating facts, right. And you don't agree with those facts. Listen, we could agree to disagree. Right. Exactly. No? Well, there's a, well, every bird it, needs two wings to fly first off. Right. So, and, and, and a guest, uh, George, actually, one of our guests, the yeah. other, one of the few weeks ago said that, and there's truth to that. Like it can't all be one way. Because, it can't. But saying well, someone inappropriately kneeled on someone's neck. Yeah, I don't care who you are. It has it's nothing wrong. to do with a political <laughs> right. association. It doesn't. It's, it's right. wrong. The jerk off was leaning on someone's neck. What do you think was going to happen? Right, right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, it's, and then, so just to, to speak to the other point, we just to double back on something we talked about before. Um, 
the, and I think you had mentioned something, you know, in regards to stigma. So if you, if you say something that's against the, you know, and, and, you know, blue line and all that, uh, the stigma is that, well, you're banished forever. You know, no, this, this thing, you know, I don't, first of all, I don't really give a shit about whether or not someone wants to attack, uh, attach a stigma to me or not. Right. You know, I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you, you know, the, an actual real time, live, factual, educational right. opinion. You know, and and, ba- and also something that's based in the law and what's legal. Right. If you don't agree with that, that that that's fine. And if you want to blacklist me and say, well, I'm I'm not part of the blue line, or I'm off the blue line, or I'm under the blue line, or whatever it is, uh, that's fine. Yeah. You know, but the bottom line is, that it doesn't erase the fact that I I gave almost 22 years of of really good service to New York City. That's that's the point right there. That's the point. record shows that. Yeah. Um, You know, with thousands and thousands of of interactions with people, numerous people that I arrested, you know, some decisions that I gave to, you know, who knows how many people of all different types. Yeah. You know, oh, you would imagine after having that many number of contacts that I probably would have had a a decent number of, of complaints. And the actual number of complaints that I had was, Zero. Zero. Yeah. So, so that, you know, that's a, that's really valuable. And also, you know, yeah. you would mention like, hey, I'm not. So what I what I say, I'm not here to bring my report card home anymore. I don't have to do that anymore. Right. You know. But yeah. you when you were saying like, I don't care what where they where what the stigma says or what what anyone else says about me. That also shows growth. Yeah. That also shows. Hey, listen, I paid my dues. Yeah. I, I've I, I seen don't, it I, all. Yeah, I don't. And I, I know. I don't have to make you happy. Right. With me I don't anymore. have to make you happy. And I think that that that's that's a sign of a true man, to be honest. Yeah, with you. it and is. God bless on that one. All right. Well, so well, we well, got well, our well, last well, minute going on. Oh, sorry. Ha! Ah! We. <laughs> the show. I know, I could, we could go on for another. The show. You 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 are totally welcome to come on anytime you yes! want. Yes. But um, all right. So we talked about you worked in schools, and before you go, please. Mm-hmm. What 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 do we really need to be teaching our kids right now at home? Uh, well, I would say uh, on a local level, as far as the Long Island area is concerned, you know, uh, as far as people who are uh, kind of caught in this hamster wheel of of something, yeah, uh, whether it be drugs, whether it be domestic violence, whether it be depression. Uh, the Long Island Crisis Center, which is based in Delmore. Love the it, Long Island Crisis Center. It's a phenomenal, mm-hmm. phenomenal homegrown resource that people yes. should be going to uh, and should not feel weird going to them, right? right? Because thousands and thousands and thousands of people have, have you know, used their services over the last couple of decades, mm-hmm. including cops. Right. Um, you know, I have enough PTSD to, to choke a horse with. <laughs> um, yes. Which is something we could talk about another day, but yeah, you know, and they, they have a program within under the uh, Long Island Crisis Center umbrella called Pride for Youth, which specifically addresses the needs of LGBTQ yes. young people. All right, so that that's another yeah. phenomenal program that they have. And again, all this stuff is for free. Yes, uh, it is. All, so there is help and out there uh, for people to to you know get themselves out of whatever quagmire they they are in and it's not going to happen overnight it's, it, it could take days it could take weeks it could take months it might even take years right you know yeah. um what a great service you know so so people should know that there are things out there available to them yes that they can that go can help. to yes you know, the, the police are, are the police you know they're, they're, their job is to enforce the law you know unfortunately the way that our system is set up is you know people caught with narcotics uh, whether it be heroin or, or, or Coke or crack or crystal meth or whatever it may be, um, are going to be treated based on what the law says that they should be treated as, right? right? So whereas where there should be more of a, in my opinion, it should be more of a focus to having more programs that will address those those addiction issues and getting them out of that, right, into something more positive and productive. Yes. And then maybe go after those who are supplying those narcotics right. to those who are easily susceptible to them or get hooked on them or you know yeah. what I mean? so Listen, that's what law enforcement should be shifted yeah. and it is it, it's there right but i think more programs need to be developed to yes to absolutely a, i agree what a great show yeah it's definitely different from the norm we want yeah. to say thank you thank by the you, way Tom. like so like even now you had pfizer settling on a huge lawsuit um i think uh you know 
Johnson and Johnson just settled on a lawsuit. There's always going to be a supply. Right. There's always going to be always. The, there's always going to be the supply and there's always going to be the demand. We have to cut the heads off on both. We have to this is a fight that we have to attack from every a- yes, angle. Every and angle. as someone that has supported the LBGTQ plus community. Me too. Uh, uh, you know, I, I just really want to celebrate who you are and what you did and 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 what you've done for our city and state. So Yes. That's it for us. So I am Benny the Life Coach. I am Teresa D. Tom, you are the man. Tom, you are the man. Have a good one, folks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Peace out.